Hello everybody and welcome back to the next episode of 200 Hours in Godot, the series where I spend 200 hours, multiple years, and cling on to my own livelihood, trying to develop a game in Godot. Uh, it's definitely been quite a while since I did the last series, I think I've been at 120 hours so far for quite a while, but uh, I've picked it back up. We're going to start doing some Godot, and I'm excited to show you guys what's been happening. So before I go through what's new, or at least what I can remember is new, holy moly, uh, I'm sure you guys know, but when you come back to something after not really looking at it for quite a while, it really gives you a new appreciation of the absolute mess that you've created. So I came back to this project, uh, looked through the insane folder structure where we have everything everywhere. Um, and then for some reason, items weren't equipping anymore. I think I upgraded to Godot version 4.3 and items just weren't equipping. I was going through all the debugging. I looked through the, the recent Git history. I hadn't touched any of this code whatsoever um and just yeah one of the real things that made it difficult is you know i have like four different classes for slots i have a trade slot i have an equipment slot i have a slot slot and then i think i even have like a some form of a resource slot to handle stacking and it's just insane and it makes it like it just makes debugging really difficult with this but it's just one of those things at the time when i created this one i didn't really have a good idea of oh i'm gonna need multiple different slots with slightly different uses um and also i just wasn't particularly familiar with the dough either so i wasn't crazy comfortable just kind of knowing the best thing to do um, but on the flip side, it all kind of works. Anyway, I did manage to fix um, the issue and that involved changing, and if anybody knows why this helped, I preload the player equipment. The player equipment is just a resource with the equipment in. It's fairly simple, but um, when I change it to load, it suddenly just works. So. If anybody has any idea what was going on there, that'd be quite helpful because I spent probably two hours just stepping through everything, trying to figure out why the thing that worked didn't work. Side note, I don't know if anyone has any experience with like unit testing or if, pe if that's what people do in games. I'm quite interested to know that. Not having unit tests, I feel like was a little bit, left me a little bit vulnerable, let's say. So this is the village that we've been making for God knows the past six episodes. Essentially, what I've been trying to do now is, I would say copy Pokemon, but heavily take inspiration from something like Pokemon. So instead of this kind of big village, we did some quests, we did quite a few little bits of bobs here, and there's a lot of room to do more things. I think this would be quite overwhelming to drop somebody into. So I have just started working on like a little bit of a small town. We could do a very simple quest. I've got I'll show you, I'll jump into it in a second and show you what I've got, but I just want to make something that's quite small. You're not confronted with lots of different choices and options and shops, and it kind of could just guide you into something, maybe even tell a story, and then you can evolve later into the town. I think the game will make a little bit more sense. Just a quick little run through of more of the kind of like designy things that I've added. Uh, like I said, heavily inspired by Pokemon. We have our mom, She'll say things, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. See you later, Mom. Uh, we have Tiny Tim, who kind of gives the guy, you uh, your first quest. Very simple. Just go down into the basement, uh, kill a slime. Oh, I don't know why it's done that. Uh, I've now changed it so that if you don't have a weapon, you will fist the monster. Oh, I just hit a 50 because I'm wearing some crazy armor. Uh, then if you equip the sword, you'll slash. Uh, I've got some plans to kind of put in like bows and arrows, magic spells, different weapons. That'd be really cool. Um, and yes, I think that's the majority of the the kind of map. That's still a little bit of a work in progress, but I think it makes a bit more sense. I've added in, which you might have seen, descriptions for items. So this is quite cool because it just gives everything a little bit of flavor text now. So I've added 
quite a lot of different items. It's quite a... Just one of those things that when you make an RPG, you just need to add in loads of different items with different texts and uses, and it's just one of those things. First on the list of never-ending things that always need doing is I have put in some really basic saving and loading. So when I click save, it should hopefully save it, and then when I click load, right now it basically only shifts the uh, position of the player, but we can load. We don't have anything cool like save slots or anything like that. But um, fundamentally, I'll leave a link. There's a there's a um, guide on the actual GNOME website of how to save and load, and it's fundamentally a very simple thing. Uh, we essentially add in what nodes we want to persist. Uh, we add them to a group. We can then put a, me a method on that node called save. We save that into a JSON uh, handle. How we how you handle that is going to be very different game to game. Like in RPG, we're going to have to have a lot of states loaded, saved, and then also kind of uh, persisted throughout the actual game itself. Like if you change areas, stuff like that. Anyway, long story short, we get the nodes of the persist group. We call a save method. We basically shove it all into a JSON file, save that. Similar thing with loading. Uh, I've done a very, very basic thing now. I've just getting the position, but you'd have to do this for kind of like your inventory. You'd have to do this for, you know, one of the things in my game is you have to open a chest. And once you've opened that chest, unless it's just part of the gameplay, the chest will need to remember that it's been opened. So there's going to be a whole boatload of things. Um, I think one of the things we're saving is the sooner that you implement saving into your game and kind of work with it, the easier it is, rather than trying to retroactively go back in time and persist everything. So definitely, I, I recommend just giving a go of saving and loading because, you know, maybe next game I might actually think about this before I've put in all this work. So the next uh, quite big thing that I've been working on, which is just more of like a technical design thing is how I handle scenes and changing scenes. So initially when I started this I have a scene called New Home which is the overworld, we've been through this multiple times. Uh, I also have the underworld, we've also been through this and originally these were completely separate scenes so when I teleported to the underworld, I'd create a new audio player, I'd create a new player, I'd create all the hood again. If I went back to the new world, I had all this like hood and player stuff kind of replicated because it, it was just very straightforward. And you know, in maybe a lot of games, like that's fine. You can just go to a brand new scene, just create all the UI again. Uh, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to go up the stairs and I wanted to go down the stairs without the audio starting again because previously if i went up the stairs it'd be a new scene i'd load the audio player up again the music would restart uh this was also an issue with saving and loading because i essentially just had to have a way of having continuity between all the scenes and controlling that so i've kind of did a little bit of a refactoring and how it now works instead of having all these separate scenes with uh, the ui and stuff duplicated I have a single main game scene and in here I have the player I have the overlay I also have uh, just a kind of like a global background stream player and I now programmatically change what the scene's in so say for example saving and loading I can just keep a track of what the current scene is and then I've not quite done it here but I can keep track of what the current scene is I can save that and then I can load that scene uh, same with the background stream player. Um, I now just have one single player and I can just ping events. If I want to change the music, I can ping events. If I change scene, it won't create a new audio player. I can just handle that based off which scenes come in and out. Uh, so that's, it's quite a small thing in terms of how it worked, but it was, it was something that I had to kind of rethink about because it was starting to cause issues in how I wanted to actually change the game. Cool. So the one of the things as I was refactoring this all and kind of um, changing how I control the continuity between stuff was using the event bus pattern. 
I know there's quite a lot of like tutorials and guides and I think a lot of them go kind of heavy with the event bus but I never really had used it you know exactly like that but quite simply the event bus pattern if uh, I could call it a pattern is you have a, a global file or a singleton that has signals in it which seems quite fine but previously, just to explain it in terms of how I'd use signals and stuff, so here's my UI inventory, and it's made up of multiple different components, and some of these things maybe like used in trades, stuff like that, reused a little bit. And then within the components, I'll have like little slots, stuff like that. So one of the things that I kind of found myself doing a lot was I'd have maybe like a button within the slot, that button would have a signal, that signal would be propagated up to the component, and then that, that uh, signal would be propagated up again into uh, kind of like the container so that we could communicate with multiple different components and kind of organize that. That's all well and good, but it was starting to get a little bit crazy in terms of handling these signals and the references to them, propagating them up. And I uh, saw on a website, some someone was basically advising that if you have to propagate up a signal more than once or twice, just use an event bus, which is basically just having a global reference. I think it's quite neat, really quite straightforward. You can just include the uh, global, global signature fire a signal on it and anything that cares about it it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's you know on the other side this might be the issue with it is that it doesn't matter if it's you know where it is in the game if it has um you know access to a global singleton which it will it can then have that so it kind of takes this kind of deep propagated signal chain and kind of makes it a little bit more lateral and i have use this a lot for example with uh like the audio track i have a global audio track if i can just find that here and then i, I just really have a, a function that listens to uh the the global event and then we change the audio so anything could change the background audio if it wanted to it doesn't matter what its relationship is, like from a no perspective. So to be honest, that's uh, probably really everything. Uh, there's still a whole bunch of stuff to do. You can see here, I've got my little uh, Kanban board, whatever, of all the things I've done, what's in progress, what's to do. So there's loads of stuff that needs to be done. Um, just need to keep cracking away at it really and keep sinking in those hours and, you know, overall, Things are getting better, starting to learn more and more things, and you know, when I make that next game, which will be the game that I actually want to make, um, I think I'll have all the tools in the tool belt that's needed to, you know, get a really good head start on it. So everybody, that's about everything for this video. Uh, thank you everybody who might be watching, who remembers me. Appreciate it. it's been a long time, but you know, we got to keep at it. We got to stay persistent. Got to keep battling and. Um, you know, we learn something new every day. But thank you very much. Hope you guys are all good. See you later.